Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video is going to be sort of a two-part study with me video, if you will. I'm probably just going to call this a study with me because I'm not sure what to call this, but if you guys didn't see, um, a few, maybe a month or two ago, I did a haul sharing some stuff from Union Gospel Press. This is the company that my church uses for their Sunday's booklet, and I received mine for the fall quarter. We will be going into the second Sunday, which means we'll be on lesson two, and though I did get a chance to do lesson one in church, I prefer to do my lessons prior to church so that if I want to share my thoughts, I can. Most of the time, I don't get a chance to participate in Sunday school only because we're normally heading back from a different church to my church because my church services starts at 4 o'clock. So, I'm going to walk with you guys through on how I do this as well as share with you guys my thoughts. If you haven't seen that review, click the eye on the screen of, not the review, but the haul I did of Union Gospel Press. They do have um, this sample box that you can order and it's free. I think the only thing you have to pay for is shipping. Don't quote me on that though. Um, but I did get a big box from them with a lot of their stuff, I think from the spring quarter, which was awesome. Um, and they give you a variety of booklets and whatnot. So we have this one. This one is the adult Bible class for adults ages 26 and up full quarter for September through November, 2019. It says Union Gospel Press here. Actually, let me go grab my other booklets quickly for you guys. Okay guys, so I'm back. So here are the other three booklets um, that I got. So I have the winter quarter, which went from December 2018 to February 2019. The spring quarter, which I did get around to doing some stuff in the spring quarter. I don't think I did anything in this one. Just because, like I said, we don't get to church until it is time for church. Like four or after like four. So I don't really get to participate in Sunday school as I would like to. But I think I got around to doing... Yeah, I got around to partaking in two... For the spring which was lesson four and I just took a few notes nothing crazy but I also got to partake in um, lesson 13 but for lesson 13 I used the printable that they gave because I ended up forgetting <laughs> this because I thought we weren't going to make it to church on time and we ended up making it to church on time so yeah it's funny how that works right and then here was the summer one um, this does come in a large print edition which it looks like this. I personally don't like the large print edition. It bothers me. Um, and the paper like is extremely white compared to this. And I feel like it's harsh and you get a lot more see-through. Um, not see-through, but shadowing from the font than if you get this size. So I normally get this size. There is a teacher edition. I have not been purchasing the, te the teacher edition, though I actually should be purchasing, purchasing the teacher edition. But um, for the winter quarter, I will be getting the teacher edition in this size just because I do hopefully want to be able to teach Sunday school at some point. Um, I know that as a leader in the ministry, I will have to at some point in time, but um, I always just want to stay prepared. And I do like the teacher booklets. I was looking for my mother's um, because I normally buy her the teacher edition in the large print, but can't find it. So that's why you saw the um, summer one. But anyways... This is the booklet. Um, this book is only $3. Um, and if you get the large print edition, hope you guys can see $3. The large print editions are only $3.75. And I think if you get the teacher editions, there may be $0.50 cents or a dollar more. I'm not sure. I can't find them at this point in time. But um, they're not expensive at all. You can get the ebook versions on Kindle through Amazon, or you can get the physical ones. You can get the ebook as well for iBooks, I believe. I'm going to leave links to all of that down below for you guys to check out. But yes, we're going to dive into this. So this is that volume, which I don't know what CV stands for. <laughs> but um, adult Bible class, full quarter, September, October, November. Um, unit one is the call to deliverance. So that is going to be the first four weeks of September. Unit 2 is Preparation for Deliverance. That is going to be the last week of September plus the four weeks in um, October. And then the last four weeks, which are in November, is going to be un Unit 3, which is Deliverance Accomplished. So there we go. So you can do three $3 per quarter, which is $12 a year. Um, but you just pay the shipping and handling. But shipping and handling is not expensive at all. Um, you always get this little editorial, which I don't really read these. <laughs> I probably should, but I didn't read it. Um, so like I said, long 
a long heart oppression was lesson one this was on september 1st i did get a chance to catch up on this when um the elder at my church was leading the um sunday school lesson but i didn't really get a chance to like actually dive in myself so that's what i'm gonna do we're gonna do lesson one which it comes with it actually comes with your scripture text in here and i believe this is in the king james yeah this is the king james translation so if you have another translation you prefer you might want to have your bible um and then you normally get your title of the lesson which is a long heart oppression you get your lesson text which is the main focus you get related scriptures they give you the time the place a key verse, which I think is great if you're into using key verses and writing out um, in like a scripture writing plan or anything. Um, then you get your lesson exposition, which breaks down each verse. Not each verse, but it goes piece by piece of each verse. So this would be um, verse 7. This would be verses 8 through 14. And things like that. And they have titles, which I like. Um, at the end, you get some questions. And the questions always correlate back to the actual exposition. So you can pull that out immediately. It's not hard to do. Then over here you have practical points, which would be like five points that they want you to really take out of the lesson. You get some research and discussion questions, which this is more hands-on where you grab your Bible um, or you actually go to the lesson text if need be and you research the stuff for yourself. Um, they give you focus information on that key scripture, which is why it's called Golden Text Illuminated, and then you get your next lesson. Um, they give do give you a box for notes, but you guys know I like to write notes. <laughs> So where's the box for notes on here? Yeah, see how small it is? So that's why I have a notebook. I'm going to show you guys the supplies I'm going to do. Um, and then we're going to do lesson two, probably in a separate video as well. Um, and it's going to be the birth of Moses. So it, the same thing, your lesson text, your related scriptures, time, place, golden text, your lesson exposition, your questions, practical points, research and discussion, and then the key scripture just illuminated with more information. And that's pretty much it. What I like is that they give you the name of each person that creates the content that you're looking at, which I like. So they tell you who wrote the lesson, where the questions are from. Obviously, the questions would be from the same person. Who pulls out the practical points, research and discussion questions, and then who wrote the golden text illuminated. So that's awesome. Um, but at the back of this, so... At the back, they always give you some type of um, paragraph on the people and places. And I'm actually going to open this up. Here it is. I was looking for this, you guys. I couldn't find it. <laughs> I use that to mark where I am. But they always give you some type of paragraphs on um, the places and people that are mentioned within the entire lesson text, if that makes sense, because it's kind of focusing on specific people. Um, and then at the back, they give you a map. So this one is from Egypt to Canaan. I think this one was, um, which one is this? the ancient eastern world that was for the summer quarter the spring quarter was the journeys of paul and the roman empire and i'm sorry i don't think i named this one correctly for the summer i did actually whatever um <laughs> and then the winter one was the palestine at um the time of christ so yeah we have those Putting those there um but this is what i wanted to show you they have this section here called daily bible readings for home study and worship so it says readings are for the week previous to the lesson topics and um basically what you do is it says the first one for like okay i'm gonna actually do the second one so let me zoom in for you guys quickly okay i hope you guys are seeing this but um right here it says number two which is lesson two it's for september 8th the birth of moses so they tell you which lesson it's in regard to but you would start on monday so basically last monday last monday this past monday i mean <laughs> i don't know why i said last monday i'm trying to open up my calendar real quickly to get the date but monday was um obviously labor day duh september 2nd so you would start i would you would start reading on september 2nd and you would learn moses's family history you would learn um his birth and upbringing then you would do the protection in times of trouble the protection from the wicked drawn out of the waters childlike trust in god and then the eighth which would be this coming sunday we would dive into this lesson um in the sunday school session which is exodus 2 1 through 10 and you can see here it says exodus 2 1 through 10 so that's how that goes so i really have to do about um 14 readings of text <laughs> For this video but again like i said i'm gonna do this in two separate videos so we're focusing on a long heart oppression so i'm gonna have to read all of these scriptures here and i'm gonna do it um 
And I'm not going to be like extensive with my notes. That's just not what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to put my bookmark to the side for now. But yes. Okay, so supplies for this. Um, we obviously need the booklet. <laughs> so again, this is the fall quarter. I have a journal. This journal is from um, Walmart. It is the Class X Stationery from Pink Chandelier. This is called um, Lauren. It's from the Lauren Collection. I don't know if you guys can see this from the Lauren Collection. Can you see that? There we go. So it's Pink Chandelier Lauren Collection um, by Pink Light Designs. But it's called Class X Stationery at Walmart. They make the pretty florals and stuff. I have this same exact one in gray. And then I have a black design one, which has like a different rose floral design. But I love it. And it is dot grid. So this is going to be um, kind of new for me, if you guys can see. Dot grid. New to me using this so we gonna pray it works <laughs> so you have that i have my pen pouches um this one is what i use when i'm doing bible studies so inside here i have my crayolas um twistables with my sharpie highlighters which i'm just gonna place these inside of here i don't think i need this red one but i need the green I also have my Bible study key, which is probably what I'm going to use because this is kind of like a Bible study for me. So we have that, and I'm just going to place that right in front of me so that I can keep an eye on that. Um, then I have this pouch here, which has my Zebra Knot Liner Highlighters and my Microns and my um, Zebra F301 ballpoint pen. So we have that here because I also have my Bible. And my Bible of choice, you guys should know I've been loving this Bible. It's this one here. And let me actually open this up. It is the um, NKJV Spirit Filled Life Bible 3rd Edition. I love this one. This is the burgundy one. And it's literally become my new go-to Bible, like, for real. Um, so that's what we have for that. So, I do have something to drink with me here just because I know... I'm going to get thirsty. And I also have my Bible annotating um, key here. I decided for this study Bible, I need to use an annotating key just because I want to, I'm going to start taking this to church probably. And um, I just, certain Bibles, I need to have an annotating key. If I have a journaling Bible, I don't want an annotating key just because it's a journaling Bible. It's just my thoughts. It's my, the things that I get from studying the word of God. But with study Bibles, I've noticed when my colors don't mean specific things and I just have colors everywhere. I get confused so that's why I have a Bible annotating key and I'm gonna go through all of like my Bible annotating keys because I know you guys are interested in that so I'm gonna just put that here on the side and we're gonna start we're gonna start and pray that this works out <laughs> so yeah okay I'm also gonna use my phone if I need it um, so opening this back up okay um, we're actually not starting here duh we're starting back here um, and we're going to start with Israel and Egypt, Exodus, um, one and then one through six. So I'm going to open up my Bible to Exodus. Oh, oh look at that. We're there. We're going to go to chapter one and then we're going to do verses one through six. And if I don't understand, I will just look up, um, a different translation on my phone, but hopefully you guys can see this. And like I said, again, we are on Exodus 1, 1 through 6. I'm going to take a pen. I need a pen. My pens are over there, so I'm just going to use this one. Again, this is the... I don't know if it's going to focus, but... um, There we go. The F301.7 millimeter ballpoint pen by Zebra. Same people that make them outliners that I love. I just love this pen. Um, they do have gel pens like this as well, but we're going to go with this. And um, we are going to just check this off because I'm currently reading that. So we have that one, which is Israel and Egypt, Exodus 1, verses 1 through 6. So this is Israel's suffering in Egypt. So I'm going to read and underline um, as I read. So I'm just going to fix this up like to read a certain way <laughs> I 
Okay, so really, all that I underlined in this was the portion that, that talks about um, Jacob and his 12 sons and how they had moved to Egypt. And there were 70 persons um, in the descendants of Jacob. And I, I think this doesn't include Jacob himself, um, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm reading my notes at the bottom, and it says, Egypt, situated in the northeast corner of Africa, is a site of Egypt. Um, is the site of Exodus. The book of Exodus is a continuation of Genesis account dealing with the 430 year development of a family group of 70 into a large nation. So, yeah, um, that's pretty much it. And it talks about Joseph dying as well as his brothers. So, we have that. Moving on, we're going to go to Acts 7. Um, I have some stuff in Acts already highlighted. <laughs> But Acts 7, oh wait, okay, Acts 7, and then we need 17 to 19, which is here. Check that off. Um, here we go. So it's only two verses we have to read. Okay. Okay, so the only thing I underlined here was in verse 17, it says, But when the time of the promise drew near, which God had sworn to Abraham, um, the reason why I under underlined that portion was because, um, literally my bishop was actually talking about this on Sunday, his message was um, the power of promise. And um, he, was, he was actually focusing on um, on Abraham and the whole situation with him having to sacrifice Isaac. Um, basically, you know, God promises us, things and a lot of the times it doesn't take place immediately um if i'm not mistaken abraham was about 70 they was in their 70s if i'm not mistaken when god had promised them isaac but they didn't have isaac until they were about 100 years old so it took time for that promise to come to fruition and the fact that it says the time of the purpose i mean sorry the time of the promise drew near there's a time in which that promise will take place there is a time and a purpose for that promise just because god promises us something doesn't mean it's going to happen immediately it's not going to happen overnight it's not going to happen the next day now don't get me wrong some of the promises are immediate but majority of the times there is a waiting period before that promise is um fulfilled and um then i underline the part that says god had sworn to abraham because this is something that goes back to genesis that when he promises to abraham so um you know i just thought that was insightful and it related back to what i learned this sunday at church from my bishop so we have that and i'm gonna actually make note of that when i go write my notes in the journal but um then we have wednesday's reading which was hatred for god's people this is going to be psalms 105 23 to 25 and obviously you would do this every day, read one of these scriptures a day, which is great. It's not overwhelming, but I do want to just catch up. Um, you guys know me. <laughs> so, yes. Um, 105, 105, 104, 105 is over here. Okay. And it's going to be 23 to 25. Let me check that off. Um, 23 to 25 is on this page. So. It's um, titled The Eternal Faithfulness of the Lord, but in the booklet it says um, Hatred for God's People. Alright, so from this, what I'm getting out of just reading those three verses is that Jacob um, was in Egypt and he did a lot of good to help god's people so in doing that um and making the people of israel stronger than the enemies of god obviously there will be some jealousy obviously there will be some people upset so those people who were not of the children of god became angry and um devised their plans obviously that's pretty much the story <laughs> that you read throughout the bible of god's people becoming stronger god's people um having success in others becoming angry and wanting to harm them in some way so that's basically what i'm getting from those three verses um so moving on is that first corinthians 3 and um 18 to 20 so let's get there 
And I'm kind of getting better at knowing where the um, scriptures, like the books of the Bible are, only because that was a part of the test. So, <laughs> that I had to take. So, um, 1 Corinthians 3, 18 to 20, right? Yes, and that is here. So, in the booklet, it's called The Wisdom of the World. Um, over here, it is called Avoid Worldly Wisdom. So... Okay, so um, I highlighted, not highlighted, but I underlined verse 18 um, where it says, let no one deceive himself. This is kind of like, um, I don't want to say an instruction, but it's kind of like, hey, this is something you should make sure you understand, never to deceive yourself. And it talks about how those who believe that they're wise, they need to become fools so that they are wise. Um, we know that God will use the foolish things to confound the wise because the wise um, are more so concerned with their own kind of um bragging rights if you think about it so i think that's interesting it says the wisdom of the world is foolishness with god because um you should not seek the wisdom of the world but you should seek the wisdom of god which is why they don't work hand in hand then it says he catches the wise in their own craftiness so i need to figure out which scripture this comes from um i know it's over here somewhere so i'm gonna actually look 19 that's actually um gonna be from job 5 and 13 and then there's also in verse 20 it says uh the lord knows the thoughts of the wise and they are futile and if you go here that is going to be from psalms 94 and 11 so um yeah let me just quickly read the notes and see what this so it's oh duh it tells me actually in the notes that it's quotations from job 5 13 and psalms 94 11 i did not have to look in this section over here but um Basically, it's all about shaming the Corinthians for glorifying in the wisdom of their religious leaders. So, pretty much glorifying the wisdom of man and not of God. So, moving on back to Acts. We're going to go to Acts 4 and 1 through 4. Sorry I got you guys going, like, page hopping with me. But, um, Acts 4. Okay. You guys can't really see. Let me move the Bible up a bit. Let me move this over. I need a bigger desk. You guys have no idea. Like, I can't wait till we move and I get my office. Ugh. My mom and I are going to make sure we have an office that we can share since we both do administrative type work at church. And just because I want an office where I can go and study the word of God in peace, you know. But, um, so one through four would be this section here. Um, it's called Peter and John Arrested in here. They call it further growth after persecution. So, um, on this section, I really just underlined in verse two, where it says that the Sadducees were greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus. Um, the resurrection from the dead and um, it just reminds me that no matter what you do when it comes to preaching the gospel there's gonna be a fight from people like you're gonna have people those people who believe and those people who fight against that so that's just what I thought of um, then I underlined in verse 3 and 4 where it says put them in custody until the next day I underlined that only because in verse 4 it says however many of those who heard the word believe the number of the men came to be 5,000 um, so the part which says the number of the men that um, came to be about 5,000 just made me think of Jesus feeding the 5,000 plus people. That's just what I thought of. Um, don't ask me why. <laughs> but um, the, the portion that really sticks out to me was that they put them in custody until the next day. Then it says, however, many of those who heard the word believed. So for me, what I think is that they wanted to arrest you know, Peter and John, because they wanted to stop people from hearing the word. They wanted to stop them from preaching the gospel. They wanted to stop them from reaching many people and converting them people from false religion to true religion. And in spite of them being arrested, um, the people didn't fear them being arrested. The people still believed in the word because the word is convicting. The Holy Spirit is convicting. Um, I don't, the Holy Spirit came in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm on the right point. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, the fact that they really tried to you know, arrest them and keep them locked up and thought that that would cause fear in the people to stop those people from converting um, to the faith, just like mind blows. So, um, I 
I'm just looking at the notes quickly. But yeah. All right. Going on, we're going to go to Daniel 3, 16 and 25, which is Courage Under Fire. And I believe that's about um, the three Hebrew, the three Hebrew boys. Oh, my God. I can't speak. Now, Daniel. Ooh. Oh, look at God. Got there quickly. <laughs> um, Daniel 7, 6, 3 over here. And we need, ow, that hurts. 16 and 25. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right here. So I'm going to read that and come back and tell you guys what I have underlined. So for here, um, I went back to verse, I think this is 16, yeah, 16, um, and honestly, the whole <laughs> conversation that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego has with King Nebuchadnezzar, um, um, when they said that we had no need to answer you in this matter, it's just like they exude such confidence in God at this point, you know, they're facing a king who demands that everyone bows down to this golden image that he made. It's not just a golden image. I know it's like gold and bronze and all that. But um, he literally demands everyone to bow down. And most people do except for them. Um, and they just have this boldness to them that kind of inspires me and wants me, not wants me, but makes me want to have that kind of boldness in God. Because they're just like, you know, we have no need to answer you in this matter you're talking to a king that can easily kill you <laughs> and they just it's not that they don't fear death because i'm sure that they do fear death but they fear god more than they even fear the thought of dying at the hand of the king you know um and then they say if that is the case our god whom we serve is able to deliver us so again they're proving a point not a proving point but um they're standing on the promise that god will deliver them um, and then they say that he will deliver us from, you know, your hand. So not only are they remembering the promise of God, but they have faith in that promise that he says. Then they even go further and say, but if not, let it be known to you that we do not serve your gods. So they know the promise of God, that God can deliver you from your um, the, the hands of your enemy. They also know and have confidence and faith in that promise. But they also know that God is God. He can choose to do what he wants to do. Um, and I'm not saying that to, you know, sound negative, but he's God. He does not have to deliver you from your enemies, you know. He does because he promises to. But sometimes we have to go through things um, in order to mature and get better. So the fact that they're just like, but if he does not, it's just like, it really makes me think. Because I know a lot of the times, especially when it comes to death, we pray to God and ask him to heal our loved ones. And it's just like, we know you can heal. We know you can deliver and set free. We know you can save a loved one from alcohol abuse. We know you can save a person from um, being raped. We know you can save somebody from, you know, physical abuse in a marriage or something like that. But he doesn't sometimes. And it's just like, even in that, we get angry. Because I know there's some times when I was angry when I've gone through things. And it's just like, I didn't have the confidence and the assurance and stuff that they had. Because my thing was like, I know you can do it and you're not doing it. So now I'm upset with you. But they're just like, but even if he does not, we still serve him. And it's just like, will you serve God even if he doesn't do what he promises? Now, don't get me wrong. God is a God that can never lie. His promises and his word never comes back to him void. But it's just like, if he doesn't do it on your timing and in your way, are you still going to serve him? Are you still going to have faith? Are you still going to... Um, cling to him and that just I don't know it blows my mind after that after you know they have this confidence and this boldness and they show their faith and trust in God further down this is when they are thrown into the fire um, and the men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, are killed by the flames of the fire because obviously the fire is massive and it's you know hot but um, what amazes me is that King Nebuchadnezzar says um, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire Look, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire. They are not hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And a lot of things just pop out at me from that from that section. Um, because, one, not only do you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that were clearly bound up, like they were bound. Um, it said so, where is it? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm -mm -mm. Here we go. In verse 21, it says, These men are bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their 
other garments and they were cast into the midst of the burning fire so um they were bound they were tied up they were roped up you know bound um so to now see them free in the fire walking in the midst gives me encouragement because anything that i go through any situation um that i may face that's a hard situation i can get through it um if i have trust and faith in god i need to have that and for me i've always grew up hearing about the story of shadrach meshach and abednego it's kind of like how you always hear about david and goliath and people tell you to be david but that's not really what you should be you're more like the israelites that were afraid of goliath and jesus is more david than you are hopefully you're making sense but um yeah i wish i would have read this years ago and someone would have broke this down to me years ago because when i went through what i went through um it would have helped me to cling more to God than I did back then. But um, I just think that's such an encouragement. And then for King Nebuchadnezzar to say um, the fourth, the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Um, you know, he knows, he recognizes the son of God. People will recognize who God is no matter if they're in the faith or not in the faith. People know the son of God when they see him, period. But um, yes, okay, moving on. Um... Okay, so I've done all of these, right? Monday through Saturday. Um, so now we have to do Sunday's lesson. So what I'm going to do before I get into Sunday's lesson is move my Bible to the side. Grab my notebook. And we're going to skip a page. I don't know why I'm skipping a page, but we're going to skip a page. What is this on my notebook? We're going to skip a page. I'm going to date this and come back. Okay guys, so I'm back and I went and got my notes situated. So I put the date of the actual um, lesson, which is September 1st, you guys can see. And um, then I wrote the title, which is A Long Heart Oppression. I then wrote out Monday through Saturday readings because I wanted to keep track of any notes of the scriptures that stood out to me. So the two that stood out to me were from Thursday, which is um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verses 18 to 20 which they called the wisdom of the world so i wrote my thoughts on that which you guys heard me talk about um and then from saturday's reading which was daniel 3 16 and 25 and that was titled courage under fire under that i put lesson notes and then i'm going to just dive into the actual text um i did use my crayola super tips highlighter in blue just because i tend to use blue for scriptures if you can see so i just wanted to mark the scriptures out I might go back and highlight this portion here with the zebra highlighter. Who knows? But I'm um, moving this aside. And again, this is a journal from Walmart.grid. And I'm actually liking this a lot more than I thought I would. I didn't think I would like dot .grid, but surprisingly, I'm loving it. <laughs> so that might be my new thing. But, okay. Notebook is to the side. Alrighty. I'm trying to get this framed properly because I had to move the camera around so there we go hopefully that's good and hopefully it's not shaking as much i didn't realize it was leaning on the table as i was recording but um okay so the scripture lesson text is um exodus 1 7 through 22 the related scriptures are acts 7 through um 17 to 19 and then psalms 105 23 to 25 which we read both um those came from the other days so acts 7 7 through 7 17 to 19, sorry, it was um, Tuesday's reading, and then the Psalms was on Wednesday's reading, which we already read, so I don't need to reread those. But um, this place takes place around the time of 1528 BC in Egypt. The golden text, um, I'm not going to read because we're going to go here. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read this as if I was in my Bible and mark it up as if I was in my Bible. So this portion is going to be sped up as I read.
Okay guys, so I read the scripture and wow. <laughs> Um, and I didn't do this as I fully do my Bible study just because I don't want this video to be long. So as I was reading, I was underlining, and, um, circling and stuff. I didn't highlight. Um, I may go back down the line to highlight. But, um, yeah, wow. So this, this is crazy. So it starts off by saying that the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied. So they were basically having babies. <laughs> you know, that's what it means to be fruitful and, um, you know, multiply. Um, waxed, I need to look it up. I know it has to do with being angry, but I want to get the actual definition of that, so I'm going to um, look that up in a second. But um, it says that a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. So sometimes there will, people, there will be people who come about in your life that you don't know and that don't know you. They have not heard about you. They don't know about your legacy. And um, in them not knowing about your legacy, they may try to... Um, harm you they may try to be better than you especially if they see um you know that you're succeeding in an area where they're not and they feel that they should be in a higher position than you they will try especially if they don't know your legacy to um overtake you so i thought that was interesting um that's why i underlined it a new king over egypt which knew not joseph so he didn't know the legacy and understand the children of israel um it says that he told his people the egyptians that um, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. So basically, he felt like him and his people should have been way better than the Israelites, okay? Um, then it says, let us deal wisely with them. Now, we know back from Thursday's reading, we had to read 1 Corinthians 3, 18 to 20. Um, it talks about the wisdom of the world. We understand that we are not to live um, from worldly wisdom. Worldly wisdom is foolish in the sight of God. And um, it, from Job 5.13, it talks about how God's wisdom is superior to that of man. And man is deceitful and wicked, so their thoughts are never to be trusted like God. I actually need to write down the scripture for that one because I didn't do that. I believe this was Psalms 94.11. That was the other scripture from um, there, so I just want to put that down. But, um, you know, man is naturally deceitful and wicked. Um, we're born in sin. That's just what it is. So um, you can see that when he says, let us deal wisely with them. It's not godly wisdom, it's worldly wisdom. It's him taking his authority and abusing that power. Going down to verse 12, we see that he says, the, it says that the more they afflicted them, so the more that the Egyptians afflicted the Israelites, the more they multiplied and grew. So for me, it's kind of encouraging for me. It's kind of like the more you go through, the more you will succeed. Um, God doesn't give you more than you can bear. And um, it just, it really gives me motivation especially with the things that i'm um, currently going through and i'll talk about that in another video um not personally with me but there are some things that were um, revealed and i am currently dealing with that so um that kind of just puts perspective in my mind um so then verse 15 it talks about the hebrew mid midwives sifra and pua I just underlined those because I wanted to um, just look up the meaning of their names because a lot of the times Hebrew names have a lot to do with the character of who they are as well as the part that they played in the um, book of the Bi in the books of the Bible. So I like looking up their um, the, me the meaning of their name. Sorry, um, sixteen it says, "If it be a son, then ye shall kill him; but if it be a daughter, then she shall live." So this at this point he's trying to kill off. The baby boys um and one of the elders the elder that was actually doing the lesson on this last sunday talked about how um in a sense this can be reflective of dream killers they try to kill your dream when it's just a baby when it's just being formed um if you tell somebody of an idea you get like yeah i had this idea they're quick to discourage you they're quick to tell you it's not going to work or you're not equipped to do that so um i thought that was a great correlation that she made with that but um he's this uh pharaoh this king is now trying to cut off their fruitfulness by killing off their boys you do need a man and a woman to be fruitful to create um, children and for him to say kill off the sons now you're cutting off their lineage because sons carry on that sort of duty and um, line and lineage of a family so I thought that was interesting um, but verse 17 20 and 21 get me because it says that the midwives feared God and then if you go down um, to 21 it says that they feared God again so these midwives Sephira and Pua um, though this is a king that they're most likely enslaved to, <laughs> I'm not sure if they were enslaved to him or not, but, um, they work for this king. They 
most people would fear their boss um, and not God because apparently, you know, that's the world we live in where people prefer to be afraid of man and not God. But these women were bold. They were like, you know what? No, we're not going to do this. We're not listening to you. We fear God, not man. Um, so in verse 20, it says, therefore, God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied. <laughs> so not only did God um, deal kindly with these women who stuck with the faith and stand stood on on the uh what's the word i'm looking for they they stood up for what they believed in and, and that was god they clung to him but the people that were afflicted <laughs> um they multiplied even more so it's kind of like they already started multiplying in verse 7 and then you try to afflict them in verses 10 and 11 but then in verse 12 they continue to multiply and then in verse 13 and 14 it's it's you're telling me that you try to afflict them even more but they're still multiplying to the point now you want to kill their sons off but um the midwives are not doing that because they fear god so not only did god bless the women <laughs> but he blessed the people of israel to continue to multiply and then at the end you can see that pharaoh does the same thing again of saying to now cast the sons into the river and the daughters shall live so again he's still trying to kill off this lineage he's still trying to kill off the men um by starting them off as newborn babies if you kill that newborn baby boy that family is done for once that oldest child within that family dies that's a that's a son it's over so you know that's awesome so now we're going to move on to the lesson exposition okay so what i'm going to do so that this video is not super long because it's already probably over an hour long <laughs> um i'm going to read it through underline and come back with my thoughts on each of this when i get to the questions i'll do the questions with you guys on camera um and then we'll go through the practical points um the research and discussion and then the golden text illuminated and then yeah so real quick the golden text which is like the key scripture is um exodus 13 and 14 which it's interesting as it says 13 and 14 but they only quote verse 13 but yeah it says the egyptians made the children of israel to serve with rigor and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage um so you can see that here that it's 13 and 14 is somebody texting my phone right now tell you guys i was looking to see if anybody texted my phone somebody did but i have my phone on silent so i can't really yeah <laughs> okay so um what i'm gonna do is take my blue marker because you guys know that's what I use um, and I'm gonna highlight these scriptures Okay guys, so I'm back. Um, I ha went off camera just to do everything because I didn't want this video to be too long and it is pretty late. I've been doing this for a few hours now because I had to pause the camera a few times. But okay, I'm back. So what I did was I went through and um, I just used my color code key to go through the text. So this orange and this pink, um, the neon, have nothing to do with my color code text color coding for bible annotating so what i just used the orange was for the word that i defined and then the pink was just something that stood out to me um so for the part where it says a new king over egypt i did that in gray because that's what i use for names and genealogy for the pink um i use for relationships so i did i put that um this new king which is a person and his relationship to joseph was that he didn't know them um, the parts are marked in brown are considered like sin, death, Satan, wickedness, evil, and all that. So I did verse 10, verse 16, and verse 22. Um, verses 12 and 20 I did in yellow because yellow are for like miracles, blessings, praise, worship, and all that. And then Hebrew wives and their names, again, genealogy, names. 
and then for verse 17 and 21 i did in green because that's anything having to do with faith obedience or fruit of the spirit and here these two women um co were committed to their faith and again i'll do an in-depth video on this so yeah um moving on to the lesson exposition so i went through and you guys saw me underline but um i went back and highlighted some things not everything was highlighted like on this page everything was not highlighted nor was this highlighted and um here we have on the back so again with the journal i got this from walmart if you guys are interested and they're not expensive it's dot grid um so the first thing i did was i went through the readings that are located in the back of the book on the back of the book you have daily readings that lead up to your actual um Sunday school lesson so I'm going to actually check this off okay so you have six days of reading that lead up to your actual Sunday school reading which would be day seven um so I have officially completed this from last week I need to do this coming week this coming Sunday's lesson <laughs> tomorrow um but so I did that and again Thursday's reading stuck out to me which was first Corinthians 3 18 and 20 as well as Saturday's which was Daniel 3 16 and 25 I wrote down the date, the topic, um, the scriptures, highlighted the scriptures in my blue, and wrote my notes on each scripture that stood out. Then I went with the lesson notes. Um, so then I wrote scripture text, Exodus 1, 7-22. And basically anything that I got out of here that specifically spoke to me, I ended up writing some notes on. Okay, And then I went through the exposition and I read it, underlined all that great stuff. And I wrote some notes on that. It's not a lot, just what stuck out to me. Then I tackled the questions, which are here. So I'm just going to go through the questions with you guys. Um, so the questions that they ask you are pretty much the things that you get out of the exposition. So the first question was, how did Israel fare in the period immediately following Joseph's death? I put that they prospered in the period immediately following his death. And you know that because when you go here, um, it says that, Joseph died in the land of Egypt along with all his generations. Verse 7 tells us that the Israelites prospered greatly in the time following his death. So pretty much, like I said, you can get the answers directly from the exposition. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, question number two was, what did the new king over Egypt fear? Basically, I put that the new king um, feared that the Israelites would join his enemies to fight against him. Question three is, what did the king do to address that fear? And basically, the king made them become slave laborers to address his fear. Four is, what resulted from the greater affliction of Israel? Greater affliction, um, where did I put that? Right here. Greater affliction resulted in them growing in number even the more. Question five is, who imposed even harsher treatment on the Israelites? The answer for that is that the Egyptians imposed harsher treatment on the Israelites. Six is, to what type of hard labor were the Israelites subjected? I put that they were subjected to, I put building buildings because I think of mortar and clay as like something used for building. So that's what I put, but obviously they didn't have buildings like that back in the day. But, um, you know, field service and more with rigor. So they had a lot of service to do. Um, seven was what did the Egyptian king order the Hebrew midwives to do and why? I put that he ordered them to kill the newborn sons to check their their growth and destroy them. So when I say their growth, I mean he wanted to keep the Israelite people in check. And you can get that answer literally from right here. <laughs> um, eight is how did the midwives respond to the king's order and why? I said that they feared God, deliberately obeyed the king, and gave an excuse. Um... Verse 9, cha um, chapter 9. <laughs> Question number 9 is, how did God reward the faithful midwives? And they tell about, talk about that in verse 21. But um, he rewarded the midwives by providing households to them. And then the last question is, what final edict did Pharaoh issue in an attempt to prevent the continued increase of the Israelites? And basically, he wanted the Egyptians to help throw all of the Israelite boys into the river to prevent continued increase of the um, Israelites. So that's that. So moving on to practical points. I don't really have to share that with you guys because I have it here. So practical points. The first thing they want you to really get from this um, Bible study, I guess, is that number one is that earthly leaders rise and fall, but God's power is everlasting and unlimited. They tell you the reference for that as well. The second point is that when God blesses his children with abundance, the enemy often seeks to destroy them. And that's so true. Oh, oh my gosh. Three. 
um, through the strength of God, we can continue to grow during persecution. And um, I use this Bible study key, which I'll go through with you guys in a separate video, <laughs> to do my highlightings for the exposition. But um, four is that God protects those who fear him rather than shrink from danger. And it is unwise for man to pronounce judgment against God's people. So we have that. Then we go into the research and discussion questions. And there are six of them. And I really like that those questions because they really help you to really like dive deep into what you studied and really help you to um be able to apply the scriptures so the first question is how can we recognize god giving growth and increase they give you a reference of exodus 1 7 um my answer is that we can recognize god giving growth and increase hopefully this is in frame we can recognize god giving growth and increase when it's done abundantly exceedingly and without fail Anything that God increases and grows, um, it's done with excellence. It's never done um, in mediocrity. So that's when you know, and especially when it can't be stunted, when it can't be stopped, you know it's God. Um, the second question is, how do we know that God is still with us when people turn against us? My answer was that we know that God is still with us even when people turn against us by seeing growth maturing and filling his presence and i put those because those are personal for me um when i felt like people was against me i felt myself um growing in certain areas that had to do with my gifts and um though i ignored it i knew that you know he was with me when those people um walked away as well as comfort that's another thing when you have this sort of comfort and peace about you you know the presence of god is there and um for me i feel that more so now um, when i'm going through something and i feel like people are turning away from me i just feel his peace and his presence um not presence his comfort and it just it's amazing um anyway question three let me move this out the way Question three is, why is it so important for leaders to understand the history of the people they rule? I just put that it's important for leaders to understand the history of the people they rule so they can avoid needless issues, violence, and rule peaceably. When you know the people that you are ruling over, you know how to rule over, over them and you won't feel insecure. This new king felt insecure because the Israelites were growing and because he had his own insecurities and was dealing with his own issues with other people, he immediately put the increase that the um, Israelites were getting um, into a negative situation for himself and sometimes that happens like when you're blessed a lot you have relatives and family members and friends who like want to walk away from you because they feel like your blessing is their downfall and that's never the case but um that's a whole nother story um question number four is how should believers go about accomplishing tasks that seem impossible basically I put that um it should be done in the fear of God obviously in faith and with trust that's it so you faith in God, fear of God, and trust in God. Um, that's the only way you're going to get through accomplishing those impossible tasks, those impossible things. Things that seem impossible cannot be done without God. God makes the impossible possible, so that's why I set those three. Um, five is how should we deal with the figures? Um, how should we deal with figures of authority who direct us to disobey God? I put that um, we should... Deal with them by using godly wisdom and standing firm in godly standards, not shrinking or compromising out of fear of them, but also in seeking God for help. I, in my mind, I'm pretty sure that Sephira and Pua sought God before deliberately obeying, um, you know, the king. They had to have been in prayer. They had to have maybe even fasted, but um, you, you can tell that they have the fear of God in them, so that's what I put um, and then six, I did leave the last portion of six blank, I forgot. But um, the question is a two-part question. So the first one is, how can we maintain hope in the power of God's deliverance when we are threatened? And then what biblical promises can we rely on to help us endure persecution? So I put that we can maintain hope in the power of God's delivering, deliverance when threatened by remembering who he is. Because when you remember who God is, you know that he's almighty, you know that he is alpha and omega, you know that he is the beginning and the end, you know that he is the creator of all, you know that he is the source of all, you know that he maintains, sustains, um, you know, he empowers, he graces you, he favors. So that's something that when you remember who he is, you can maintain hope in the power of his deliverance. The second thing is knowing who you are. So I put who we are, knowing that you are a child of God, knowing that you are a daughter of the king, you're a son of the king, knowing that you have power, you just have to access that power, knowing that you have dominion over certain things. Um, so that's the second thing. And the third thing is just having um, 
remembering his promises and faith. So we all know scriptures that um, help us to, uh, what's the word? We, we all have those scriptures that immediately stick out to us and make us um, motivated and encouraged. So just remembering those promises from those scriptures and believing those promises in faith, not just saying them, but actually believing them in faith can help you maintain hope. Um, and then the biblical promises we can rely on to help us endure persecution are, I'm going to put Psalms 91. But it, cause it talks about resting um, in the shadow of the Almighty. And even when you're going through persecution, rest in Him. Be um, content in Him and deal with it. I mean, look at Paul. Paul did. He had to deal with so much persecution. And he went through, but he still had peace and contentment because he was with God um, and he was in God's presence. So I'm going to put Psalms 91. Um, Isaiah, oh gosh, I think it's 4110. <laughs> I always get 43 and 41 confused. So let me look that up real quick on the Holy Bible app. But if I'm not mistaken, it's 40, ooh, no, mm -mm. we're not going to make that mistake. I believe it's 43, 1 through 3. We're going to look that up right now because we ain't trying to um, mess that up. Is it 41 or is it 43? 43 okay so isaiah 43 1 through 3 um and for me that's my scripture of the year and i know that sounds crazy that i don't remember the scripture of the year for my for myself but um i know that the verse says um that uh basically when you pass through the rivers um not the rivers when you pass through the waters i will be with you and through the rivers they shall not overflow you when you walk through the fire you shall not be burned nor shall you be i'm sorry nor shall the flame scorch you um so that's something that like really um, sticks out to me also verse 11 from that um what else can i think of off the top of my head right now and you guys it is pretty late it is um almost two o'clock in the morning <laughs> like i said i've been recording for hours so my brain is like on e but um yeah i'm probably gonna list maybe like six or so scriptures so i'm just gonna put three more hearts here so that i can list those scriptures when i would get the chance but um yeah, we have that. <laughs> okay, and then after that, you have the golden text illuminated. So they really focus on Exodus 1, 13 to 14. Um, and basically, it talks about what this quarter's um, theme is, which is deliverance. It tells you the definition of that, which is why I marked it in green. Um, and then they have these questions here that really, uh, really struck me, uh, like a struck a chord in my heart. So it says, are you experiencing a season of difficulty that seems to never end? Do the prospects of deliverance and freedom seem unimaginable? Does God seem to be distant and unconcerned with your present circumstances? And um, they said that asking these questions and dealing with them with genuine and honest reflection is the first step to experiencing spiritual deliverance. And I'm actually going to underline that. I don't know why I did. So... And then I'm going to draw an arrow so that I know that's what that's referring to. But, um, yeah, then it says through persevering trust in the Lord, the desire to honor him. And I'm sorry, through persevering trust in the Lord and the desire to honor him, the severity of your bitter life will result in glorious deliverance. God desires for you. Um, so then I just put for golden text illuminated persevering trust in God is what you need. Desire to honor him and then genuine genuine and honest reflection but um yeah that's pretty much it three pages of notes for today i was going to do um lesson two on camera what i'm probably gonna do is just do lesson two off camera um and then the next one will probably be on lesson three only because i still have to go through all um six of these before sunday so, I don't know, but I'll definitely do another video like this um, for you guys. Again, I really like the um, Union Gospel Press quarterly Sunday school lessons. I think they're awesome. You don't have to use these just for Sunday school. You can use them for personal study. Um, they're great. They do have personal studies. They have studies for children, um, all ages. When I say all ages, I mean from toddlers to, obviously, adults. Um, and I think it's awesome that they have those. So definitely check it out. Again, links will be down below and I'll actually put the information as well for the video I did for the um, unboxing. Again, click the on the screen for that. But um, 
that's it for this video thank you guys for watching rating comment and subscribing if you're not subscribed subscribe if you are click the bell to stay notified comment anything down below and i'll see you guys in the next video bye